Hey folks, Real Honesty with Jarmuth Lund. I'm Jarmuth Lund's Times of Wrestling to Piss Me Off Part 9. Yeah, I'm going to do a few more of these before, <clears throat> before probably taking another break for a couple months. It really depends. I mean, it's like I think the first seven I did within like a month, maybe within five weeks. But I talked about that in the previous show. So here we go. 18 seconds, Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan. This was meant to be the time where they destroyed Daniel Bryan's momentum. Vince is like, no, you're going to cheer my guy. This big guy that I happen to love because we all know Vince McMahon likes big guys. Kind of disgusting when you word it like that, but it's not wrong. Vince has a perception of what a wrestler is. Unfortunately, and I, I have nothing against Sheamus. Sheamus actually did very well for himself, but booking really beat him up. <clears throat> this effectively ruined his chances to be a main eventer. It did. I mean, and I'm through no fault of his own, but he was booked to bro kick Daniel Bryan as soon as the bell rang. One, two, three. And apparently four, because that's how I do counts. Um, and he was supposed to be the main guy, the guy, and, you know, be the world champion, that kind of stuff. And it just, oh, God, it was just atrocious. Daniel Bryan probably wasn't going to retain... Coming out of WrestleMania anyway, even if they hadn't done this 18 seconds thing. But they've been screwed over at, um, how was it? They got screwed over at WrestleMania 27. They got put in, I believe it was a Lumberjack match on the pre-show. <clears throat> they only got 18 seconds here. There were rumors that they were going to do Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at either Mania 29 or even possibly Mania 30, which, you know, obviously that didn't happen in Mania 30, thank God. But the idea is, is that these guys ha are capable of having great matches. Look at their Extreme Rules match that they had a month later. Two out of three fall stuff. That was brilliant stuff. But this is when Daniel Bryan arrived. This is when <clears throat> the people were like, okay, hey, no, we're going to cheer our guy. This is going to be our guy. Like, we're not going to cheer Sheamus. And it felt bad for Sheamus because he's a hard worker. He's been doing some great things, especially with Cesaro recently. And he tried his best being a main event guy. And this is his longest run. I think he <clears throat> I think he had the title for what, six months? Six months? And they did you know this is how they started. They they might as well just I, I think Kevin Nash said it best about like something where he had this like horrible gimmick. It's like I might as well just set myself on fire. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was a pretty bad thing, and it was really not an effective way to get Sheamus over, and they tried to bury Brian, and it only made the support for him stronger. Who knows, maybe Vince was playing the ultimate troll job with us, and this was his idea the whole time to keep burying and burying Brian so the people would get behind him more. I don't know. I don't know if Vince is that smart now. <clears throat> but who knows? I mean, he hasn't tried, you know, for four straight manias with some guy to try and get him over and fail miserably. Oh, wait, yes, he has, Roman Reigns, but I'll get to that later. This whole 18 seconds thing is just ridiculous, though. Um, <clears throat> the Eddie Guerrero exploitation storyline. I want to make it clear I'm not going to knock anybody, nobody, for their involvement in this. Not knock them personally, because they were just doing what they were told. But the whole thing of Ray winning the Royal Rumble for Eddie, and Eddie, you know played a trick on Ray and divine intervention gave him number two just so Eddie could watch him, you know, really earn it and stuff like that. And Triple H talking about divine intervention as to why he won the thing. And Randy Orton talking about that, but you know, you're looking up there, but Eddie's not up there. Eddie's down there in hell. And I mean Orton said that it, let me make clear. Orton said that and I think even in an interview <coughs> he said it might have been for his um documentary apex predator but i think he said that he went backstage and threw up and that might be confusing that with the arn anderson storyline where arn anderson did um whereas arn anderson and rick flair feuding into fall brawl 95 but orton seemed sick to his stomach and a lot of people just loved eddie and a lot of people generally did and i mean it, don't get me wrong this storyline was abysmal the storyline would have been abysmal no matter who was part of it but just that, and then Ray winning the title, and then not being booked all that well after that. I mean, the whole idea of exploiting Eddie's death, which, yes, Eddie probably would. If Eddie had been there, he probably would have said, I mean, obviously he wouldn't have been, or otherwise they wouldn't have done the storyline. 
But Eddie probably would have said, yeah, okay, go ahead and use this personal stuff or whatever for a storyline. <clears throat> but just, it just was bad TV. It was really bad TV, and it didn't do any favors for any of the performers. It made Orton seem like more of a prick for the wrong reasons. It made Ray seem sympathetic, but also like he was leeching off of his best friend's um, legacy in that he couldn't stand on his own. He needed to have divine intervention to win. Or he needed to use the spirit of Eddie Guerrero. Or he needed to use the storyline to get over more when Ray was over plenty as it is. And it, it just, it's kind of ridiculous how they did this stuff and how they made it seem like, oh, it was all this stuff and everything. It was just, it was just ridiculous. I don't know. I, I didn't necessarily care for it. But then we go to Brock versus Goldberg at Mania 20. And now their Mania 33 match did make up for this, but I'm just going to briefly talk about how dumb this was. Just how unbelievably dumb this match was. The idea was Goldberg was leaving. Like, I think Goldberg had a couple, uh, maybe a week left on his contract after this, or this might have been his last date. Um, hard to tell. I don't know. I wasn't there when the contract was negotiated back in 03. But he had made his appearances. He did not wrestle WrestleMania 19 because he appeared the night after. <clears throat> okay, cool. And then, you know, Brock, like, br the idea of Brock's going to go over. Brock's going to go over. Brock's going to be the new guy. Brock suddenly announces a few weeks before that, maybe two weeks before that, he's going to go to the NFL. He wants out of his contract, he's going to go to the NFL, try to become a football player. So the crowd already probably would have been booing Goldberg anyway and cheering Brock because at least Brock's staying. Now that neither guy was staying, and neither guy really cared about building up the match, I mean, the build was pretty bad. Brock's promos weren't that good, but Brock was never that good on promos anyway. They, it wasn't terrible in parts how they built it. I mean, but the last few weeks in particular, you could tell the guys didn't care. They had to add Stone Cold Steve Austin as a special guest referee just to get somebody to cheer and like, oh, you know, like, okay, hey, we got Austin here. You know, cheer this, at least support this. The crowd wouldn't. The crowd was muted mainly through the entrances because both guys were leaving. Neither guy gave an effort at all. Neither guy cared. Neither guy did, did lockups, you know, test the strain, this kind of stuff, and just threw each other off. I mean, yeah, there were a couple spears, a couple suplexes, but that was it. I mean, really, that was that was that was all the damn match was. People were chanting, you know, Goldberg sucks. Um, you know, you know, fuck this match, stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure they were chanting that, but they were like, um, it was a ton of stuff. It was like, this match sucks, this match sucks. And the the New York crowd had every right to rip into them. And I don't want to hear, oh, people are like, oh, the New York crowd was too harsh on them. No, they weren't too harsh on them. And that's part of the reason why Goldberg has always annoyed me, <clears throat> especially for his WWE run on. Look, the guy had an incredible persona in WCW. WWE didn't do right by him in, in his first run. I admit that. They should have had him beat Triple H SummerSlam 03. But then they brought him in, and he did a few matches in his later run, his 2016 to 2017 run, and he should not wrestle again. Somebody suggested the idea of having Reigns versus Goldberg at next year's WrestleMania. And I'm not knocking the person that suggested that. I just think that's a terrible idea and a terrible use for all the guys because they would try to have that match main event. They would, say, have Goldberg win another title, and then Reigns could beat him, and then Reigns could be the guy... And that would be five straight WrestleMania main events, which would tie him with, which would tie him with Hogan, which means they would just have a main event Mania 36, and then that would be it. not Goldberg, but um, Roman. <coughs> but back to this match. Watching it was an exercise in torture. Neither guy cared. Neither guy cared one bit. All, like you finally had Goldberg. Maybe the idea was that since Brock was suddenly leaving, they could convince Goldberg to stay. Well, after that crowd reaction, after the way they had treated him before, I wouldn't have stayed if I was Goldberg. I mean, could he have stayed for a number of months? Sure, he could sign, say, a six-month contract and stayed through at least SummerSlam and then opted out of the rest. But nope, Austin, it, Austin counts it down, one, two, three, Goldberg wins. Stuns Goldberg, stuns Lesnar, and Austin stands tall. Which was the right call, honestly, because neither guy gave a shit and they pissed on the fans. And that's part of the reason why I don't respect either guy for this performance <clears throat> every guy it, everybody reaches the point where they don't want to where they don't want to wrestle anymore okay granted it's a tough life it has to be 
Goldberg made a lot of money in the wrestling business doing the same shit and letting and going over a lot of people that were a lot more deserving than him. Now, yeah, his Hall of Fame induction, okay, whatever. It went way too long, which was a bit ironic given his matches. But then you got Brock, who's earned a ton of money in the wrestling business. Some deserve, some not to, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. This match was terrible. Now we go on to another Brock moment. Brock versus Taker, Mania 30. The streak is broken. I remember vividly feeling, and I'm not kidding. I mean, you know, big wrestling fan here. I felt like my soul just been sucked out. Like, literally, that's how I felt. It was baffling to see that Brock, of all people, because Brock didn't need, that's the main thing that bothered me about this. Brock didn't need to be the guy. Brock didn't need to be the guy to break the streak. Brock was going to be a dominant monster regardless. If they had had Brock beat Cena at, you know, Extreme Rules 2012, beat Triple H at, you know, say, 20, at SummerSlam 2012, lose at uh, WrestleMania 29, if he had lost here, you're telling me that Brock would have, that it would have affected Brock's credibility? No. Um... Sure, it didn't help the concussion thing and that kind of stuff. And this has been discussed a whole bunch, so I'm just going to basically just gloss over it. But sure, Taker really wasn't himself because of the concussion and because of age and stuff like that. And the fact that he's old and broken down, and I'm not knocking Taker. It's one of the greatest of all time, but he should have not wrestled after the end of an era match. Or he should have wrestled CM Punk in Mania 29. That should have been it. Honestly, 21 and 0, leave it at that. Because <clears throat> now he's what, 24 and 2? Let's see, 21, yeah, 21 and 1, 22 and 1, 23 and 1, 23, yeah, 24 and 2. He's wrestled en at enough WrestleManias. It just, it was unnecessary to have Brock break the streak. Now, I get why they had Brock break the streak. It's like, oh, who else would it be? Who else could do it? Who else could deserve the rub? I don't know, full time guy. They could have had Punk do it. I mean, Punk wasn't going to do it. I'm, I'm not saying Sean should have done it, but they could have had somebody do it that could have benefited. I would have had Bray break the streak. Flip-flop it, have, Cena, have, have Brock destroy Cena at Mania 30. Bray defeats Taker at Mania 30. And from there, Bray is the next phenom. Whether Bray would have been able to carry that for as long is hard to tell. But he would have benefited so much from that instead of the loss of Cena. And then that horrible feud with Cena... Then a few with Roman, they had some good matches, but predictable results because we all knew the Bray was going to lose. <clears throat> but the whole thing with the streak breaking, it was heartbreaking. It was incredibly heartbreaking. Because to see Taker like that, of course there was one guy booing uh, off to the side, which I, I hope that guy's not able to speak ever again. Because, yeah, wrestling fans are allowed to pay their money, but it's like, I'm going to boo Taker. Somebody should have popped the guy and, you know, broke his nose as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's what should have happened. Um, it's way past the fact now. No one would have, no one could do that. But yeah, if, if you happen to be the guy that was booing Taker right by the camera, right by the camera, Mike, that was picking it up, as he was like laying on the ground struggling to get up, I hate you, I just want you to know that I hate you, and I hate who birthed you. <coughs> But this, the streak breaking was one of the last truly shocking moments. Maybe with the exception of Seth Rollins cashing in at Mania. I'm not equating it to. The streak breaking was above that. But it's just there are very few shocking moments. And they managed to spook the crowd and just scare them and everything. And it was just, ugh. Now we move on to Ahmed Johnson. Ranted about Ahmed Johnson before. The guy couldn't cut a promo at all to save his life or save his waistline, apparently. Um, <clears throat> he was not any good in the ring. I mean, he could hit an impressive dive for a guy that big, but he had health issues, and I'm not I'm not picking on him because of his health issues, at least his kidney issues. Now, his waistline issues, his weight issues, he could have worked on that stuff. Because at that point, he became the entire nation of domination. That's how big he was. Just watching the guy, like, he was... Poised for such big things. 95, they seemed to have him poised for stuff, but then he got the he had the kidney issue and he had to have that taken care of and addressed. <clears throat> Came back and faced Triple H or no, not Triple H. Um he faced Triple H at one point, I believe, but he faced Jeff Jarrett at the 96 Rumble. And from there they seemed to steadily build him back up to where he beat Goldust at 
uh, I believe, King of the Ring 96 for the IC title. They were poised to have a champion versus champion match. It was going to be Ahmed Johnson, IC champion, versus Shawn Michaels, WWF champion, WWE champion now. But that didn't happen because Ahmed Johnson had kidney issues again. Now, it would have been kind of interesting if they had gone with that, but could you have imagined if they had actually gone with a champion-champion thing and had Ahmed Johnson beat, if they had had both titles on the line, if Shawn Michaels had lost to Ahmed Johnson and Ahmed Johnson had been WWF champion? Can you imagine how stupid that would have been? Just saying. It would have been absolutely ridiculous because <clears throat> Ahmed Johnson wasn't good in the ring. He seemed to injure people pretty often. He seemed to get injured pretty often because he was a careless, clueless son of a bitch. And then, of course, he went to WCW. I mean, after after his time in WWE, I mean, I think it was like 98, I think he was done. He was just made, I think, one of his last pay-per-view appearances with the 98 Rumble. He might have appeared in another match, like, later down the road, but he wasn't part of Mania 98, Mania 14, a.k.a. <clears throat> the Austin, you know, era has begun. Um, But, yeah, I mean, Johnson appeared in WCW in good God, I mean, it's like I remember seeing that he botched the Pearl River plunge, um, you know, the double underhook into the into the sit out power in the sit out power bomb that he did. <laughs> he botched that when he was teaming I think he was teaming up with Stevie Ray and they were taking out Booker T or whatever. It was fighting over the, the last letter T. Which was not a good storyline. I don't know who came up with I think Stevie Ray said he came up with it, which, okay, all due respect to Stevie Ray, hey, whatever. He was in the business I was, and I'm not going to knock Stevie Ray. I'm not going to. I ain't like Story Limit, I ain't going to knock Stevie Ray. I, I respect him, and I respect him for ripping apart Vince Russo on his own show. Because that's how Stevie Ray is, because Stevie Ray is awesome. <coughs> and Vince Russo is not. And sorry, again, if you're a Vince Russo fan, you have issues. You have serious fucking issues. Um, whatever. We're all fans of people that we that, that others don't like. But the thing is, Ahmed Johnson, like he was in WCW for what, six months? And he couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything. He was huge. He was massive, couldn't really do much of anything other than, you know, stumble around the ring. He forgot, I, Stevie Ray tells a really, really good story, I think, about Super Bowl 2000 uh, tag match that he had, where I think Ahmed Johnson just forgot the spots and did some stupid shit, and Booker T, Booker T and Stevie Ray, who are supposed to be feuding, are trying so hard not to laugh, which I thought was pretty damn cool. <clears throat> but watching Ahmed Johnson, you think, you think a guy that looked like that, and he had an impressive physique, and he had an intimidating presence, but when he opened his mouth, it was ridiculous. People say, oh, it's a lot like Sid. Well, Sid, to me, was better than Ahmed Johnson. I mean, and that's just my personal thing. I, I, I like Sid. I get why people don't like Sid, but I do. Even though I admit the whole st arm stabbing incident was ridiculous. However, it actually went down. But yeah, watching Ahmed Johnson was just atrocious. Guy couldn't really do anything in the ring. Anyway, that's what I gotta say. So, do you agree? Do you disagree with what I said? Like, share, comment, subscribe. Twitter link in the description. Spend real honesty with Jarmuth Lynn. I'm Jarmuth Lynn. I will see you soon.